So the best way to control for chalk brood and European foul brood, um, really different diseases. Chalk brood is Ascospira apis. It is a fungal pathogen. Um, and as a lot of fungal pathogens go, it is environment dependent a lot of the time. So you're going to see chalk brood for the most part when you have that kind of wet, cool spring. So the bees are starting to build up. They're raising some brood. Um, but the especially the Overnight temperatures are a little low when it's pretty humid all the time. Um, and in, in saying that, so one of the things you can do for chalk brood is in, introduce a little more ventilation to your hive. Um, so if you have a screen bottom board, um, maybe open that up a little bit. Um, if it's not open, you can put an, a top entrance in your hive and let it move a little more air that way. I'd say that's probably more preventative and if you have a mild case. Um, at the end of the day, if I have a lot of hives and only one has chalk brood, I am looking at that queen really hard and thinking about replacing her. So chalk brood is a really easy thing um, to prevent if the conditions are not just terrible with just the right kind of queen that has a little bit of hygienic behavior in her bees. So they'll go ahead and kick that chalk brood, um, those mummies out, and they'll fix their own problem. Um, now, if everyone has it, like I said, it may be more of an environmental thing. Um, so the other thing you can do is if you've got a hive that's sort of more severely impacted by chalk brood, you can't replace the queen right now because guess what? It's early spring, you don't have a queen on hand. <laughs> so we have all these things we'd love to do. I'd love to replace the queen, but usually it happens in, you know, March. And how many of us have a queen in our pocket in March? Not, not as many. Um, <clears throat> and so in that case, what I like to go in and do is if I have other strong hives, I may go pull some good sealed brood from another strong hive and put it in that hive with the chalk brood. Um, now, importantly, I definitely don't want to go into the hive with the chalk brood and switch that comb back into the healthy hive, right? <laughs> because that would be a really quick way to give that healthy hive a problem. Um, and, and so you may just have to, you know, replace with a foundation or whatnot. But, but that'd be my recommendation on chalk brood is, is kind of mitigate the factors that tend to correlate with it. Like I said, that lack of ventilation, um, you can help them out by giving them a little sealed brood that's healthy especially like I said, if it's purple eyed about to emerge, that'll help them a lot. Um, and then replace that queen if, if that hive is specifically bad. Um, so that would be my, chalk brood isn't to me a huge deal. I mean, it can be, um, but it's not, it's not the thing I'm most worried about. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Um, and that kind of leads us to European foul brood. And I'm also not horribly concerned about European foul brood, but, it, but it's more of an issue, I think, um, in a lot of the bees in Texas. So European foul brood, this is, um, this is a bacteria-based disease, um, but it also has these things that kind of correlate with it. It's also more likely to show up in early spring, um, but it's also correlated with kind of variable nutrition. <laughs> so when you have these early spring flows, um, more pollen and or nectar is coming in, but it's kind of coming in sporadically like this. At the bottom of that curve, that's when European tends to show up. Um, and by saying that, you might kind of guess what my, one of my treatment options is, is to go ahead and feed that hive. Um, make sure and feed for the bees that are there. So if it's already fairly well weakened by European foul brood, you don't want to feed a whole ton of syrup at once. You might want to go kind of, kind of like Blake says, trickle feed <laughs> a little bit, maybe a little thinner syrup. Um, you might put some pollen on them, but get that nutrition right. Um, and much like I said with chalk brood, you could go in to a healthy colony and help that, that struggling colony out. Um, chalk brood is a thing that the nurses are actually actively feeding the larvates and the brood food. And so if I go to help a chalk brood colony out, I want to get sealed brood, but I kind of want to take the nurses too. So I want to give them healthy new bees and healthy nurses. Um, and again, Definitely don't take that old comb from the chalk brood or the um, European colony and move it back to a healthy one because you're just, you're, you're causing way more problems. You don't want it to spread. So, uh, and lastly on the European. So again, <laughs> it can be a little correlated with queens. I'd say probably less so than chalk brood. Um, so you might, might make a note that that queen had European. Um, if she's the only one in your, say that yard that does, um, I'd keep an eye on her potentially. But you might wanna look um, at the, the age of the brood comb. 
So this is a situation where if you have really old, really dark brood comb, that may be where that bacteria is most present. So it kind of does accumulate in that old comb. Um, and so when you go to move that one in to help it, maybe take out your oldest comb and throw it away, burn it, whatever you want to do. Um, and, you know, lastly, if you have teramycin <laughs> in your truck, again, with hobbyist beekeepers, like, do, do you have a prescription? Because you now need a prescription to get antibiotics for your hive. Probably not. But that's the, uh, the other good thing you can do because European, unlike American fowl brood, is treatable with antibiotics. So you can give them a little bit of dust, come back five to seven days later, do it again, and one more time, and you've probably fixed your problem. So, but yeah, get your nutrition right. Make sure there aren't any of those old, nasty, thick and dark combs, because um, sometimes it'll just be present in one of those and nothing else, um, and, and give them a little bit of help, and you'll probably get it fixed. So, and, and outweigh the, uh, <laughs> wait until a honey flow. <laughs> if you can get them strong enough to, to make it to a decent flow, they'll probably fix it themselves.